Today we're going to review how to do long division with whole numbers and then we'll use those same properties in order to um, learn how to do long division with polynomials. So if you think back a long time ago when you first learned how to divide with whole numbers, um, what you would do, if you look at this example here, is you first would look to see if 3 fits into just this number 1. In this case, 3 doesn't fit into 1, so then we just extend it and see, does 3 fit into 17? It does. It fits into 17 5 times. So we'll put a 5 up here, and then we do 5 times 3 is 15, and that's what we'll subtract from 17. So now 17 minus 15 is 2. And if you thought of the biggest number that fit into 17, you should get something smaller than 3, which we did. So since 3 doesn't fit into 2, we'll bring this 5 down, and now we're looking at 25. So does 3 fit into 25? Yes, it fits into 25 8 times. And so we write the 8 at the top, and 3 times 8 is 24. And then we subtract again, and we get 1. Now since 1 is less than 3, we could keep going and get a decimal, but in this case, we're just going to call this the remainder. With this long division, our answer could be 58 remainder 1, or if you wanted to write it as a fraction, what we're left with is 1 for what we're dividing, and we're still dividing it by 3. So we keep that the same as this number up here. Now the reason I like to review that is because we're going to be using those same ideas when, whoops, went one slide too many, we do long division with polynomials. So if you look at your handout, this is the first example under long division with polynomials. So here we're taking 6x squared plus 5x minus 10, and we'll divide the entire expression by 2x plus 3. Now you can't just cancel something from each part individually. Um, instead we have to look at each of them as an entire expression. So I recommend rewriting the expression using our division sign because that can give you a little bit better organization. So just like we did before, we first look at what we are dividing by, um, the 2x plus 3, but we just have to look at the term with the highest degree, or your leading term. In this case, that would be 2x. And then for what we are dividing, we just again look at the leading term. So 2x and 6x squared is all we're looking at for the first one. Um, the question is, does 2x fit into 6x squared? Or 2x times what gives you 6x squared? And 2x multiplied by 3x will give us 6x squared, so that is the first term that will be in our answer. Um, so once we get that first term, what we'll do is we'll multiply it by each part here, both the 2x and the 3, and we'll subtract just like we did before. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x multiplied by 3 is 9x. And notice I'm writing them below their like terms. So here 6x squared minus 6x squared will cancel. 5x minus 9x is a negative 4x. Okay, now this negative 10 we didn't do anything with, so I just like to bring it down each time. You don't need to bring it down until the end, but I just bring it down each turn. Okay, now we're going to repeat that same process. Again, we're just looking at the 2x, and this time we only will look at the negative 4x. So 2x times what gives us negative 4x? Well, in this case, it would be a negative 2. And so that's our next term in our quotient up here at the top. Once we get the negative 2, we multiply it by each term over here. Negative 2 multiplied by 2x is negative 4x. 
negative 2 multiplied by 3 is a negative 6. And then remember, each time we subtract that entire expression. So this leading term should cancel each time, as long as you did it correctly. And then negative 10 minus a negative 6 will be a negative 4. And the way that we know we're done is if you compare the degree of what we're dividing by, here the degree is 1. With what we have down here, here the degree of what we have left is 0 because we have no x's anymore in our answer. Once the degree down here is less than the degree of what we were dividing by, then we're done. So this negative 4 would be the remainder. So the answer that we can write, it's two ways. 3x minus 2 from the top, remainder negative 4, or with that remainder we also can make it a fraction. So make this a full expression. The remainder goes on the numerator of the fraction, and then the denominator is just what we were dividing by, the 2x plus 3. Okay, I want us to do one more example um, using long division, just to notice a few more of the little intricacies with it. So this example here, we have a little bit longer expression, 3x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus x minus 1. Now what I notice right away when I look at this um, is here, when we look at the terms, we're missing a term. We have a fourth power, a third power, but right here there's no squared. Then we go to just the x and then the constant. So if I were doing this problem, I would add in a section for the squared terms. Again, you don't have to do this, but I find that it helps to stay a little bit better organized because when we're subtracting, we always like to write things under their like terms. And if we don't have any x squareds, then we kind of mess up our columns if we get an x squared while doing the division. Um, if you don't end up getting an x squared, then that just can go away at the end. But this way it can help us stay organized to start. So what we'll look at here is we'll look at our leading term, the x, and our leading term here, the 3x to the fourth. So the question is, x multiplied by what gives you 3x to the fourth? And here, our answer is 3x cubed. So just like before, we have to multiply this 3x cubed by both pieces over to the left. 3x cubed multiplied by 3x to the fourth is a negative 3x to the fourth. Oops, I think I said that wrong. 3x cubed multiplied by x is a negative 3x to the fourth. And 3x cubed multiplied by 4 is 12x cubed. And remember, we are subtracting both of these. So that subtraction sign needs to go in front. When we subtract, our x to the fourths cancel. And then 2x cubed minus 12x cubed is negative 10x cubed. And here, we're just going to bring these down because nothing changed with any of these last three terms. Now we repeat the process but with the new leading term. So x multiplied by what gives us negative 10x cubed? It would in this case be negative 10x squared. And so we multiply negative 10x squared by both pieces of the x plus 4. Negative 10x squared times x is negative 10x cubed. Negative 10x squared multiplied by 4 is negative 40x squared. So when we subtract, the x cubed terms cancel, but this is where that 0 comes in handy. If we hadn't had a 0 that written, you could have just assumed it was a zero and gone on, but this way the like terms could stay in their columns. So zero minus a negative 40x squared 
will be a positive 40x squared. And then the negative x and negative 1 will stay. So down here our degree is 2, up here the degree is 1, so we have to keep going. x multiplied by what gives us 40x squared? It is 40x. And so we'll multiply that by x plus 4, and we end up with 40x squared plus 160x. Okay, now we're subtracting. So the 40x squareds cancel, and then you just have to be careful here. You're going to do a negative x, that's like a negative 1 as the coefficient, minus 160. And it gives you negative 161x, and that 1, the negative 1, will stay. Now notice these still have the same degree, so we have to do it yet another time x multiplied by what gives us negative 161x? It's negative 161. I'm running out of room there, but hopefully you can see that. Um, so we'll multiply each of these by negative 161 and then subtract. So we get negative 161x and then negative 161 multiplied by 4 is a negative 600. 44. When we subtract the x's, they cancel, and then negative 1 minus a negative 644 is a positive 643. So that will be our remainder, because the degree is less than the degree up here. Okay, so the answer, this one's a long one. Two options for writing this. We'll rewrite this entire quotient here at the top, and then you can just write remainder 643, or to write it as a full function, instead, we can take the remainder and put that in the numerator of the fraction, and then take our x plus 4 and put that in the denominator. So there is a quick explanation of how to do long division with polynomials.